Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about the 2018 MechWare Online Annual Rewards Program. The details of the program has just been released, and the mechs are coming fairly shortly, in just a month or two, if I'm not mistaken. So it's yet another anniversary, and we're going to get new sort of loyalty mechs. They're not really heroes, but they do have the 30% C-Bill bonus for five different chassis. We've got the Nightjear, the Marauder 2C, the Warhammer, the Javelin, and the Rifleman. So let's go through the different uh, rewards and how you can qualify for those. So first up is the active player reward. So you just must have played 100 matches over the last year. Very simple. Everything counts. Quick play, Solaris 7, faction play, everything. If you've been relatively active in MechWarrior, essentially, if you've played a match every three or four days over the last year, you've got this. Realistically, if you've done any event where you've had to go in and drop and grind something out, you've more than likely finished this off. But it's quite easy to get. The rewards are okay. You're going to get 2 million sea bills, a mech bay, and a five-year anniversary cupcake. And this is all being injected on November 13th during that patch. If you have purchased or acquired MechWarrior credits on your account in any way that you've gotten the MC, it's either through the Solaris 7 bundle, the MWO World Championship 2018 bundles, the dropship deals, pick a, ma pick a pack bundles, or any amount of MC, you uh, or or any Steam bundle, or any of the performance bundles, or the Solaris 7 bundle if you're purchasing through Steam, all that stuff, you will get the Javelin 1F. Is this the 11F or the 1F? 11F, I think it is. Loyalty variant, and the Mech Bay, and an MC reward hanging item. We're going to go over the uh, loadouts of those mechs after we read out all of the different rewards, and I'll tell you what I think that will be used on them. For the next reward, we have the Inner Sphere. You must have purchased any tier of Inner Sphere collection or Inner Sphere a la carte mech before, since the November 14th, 2017. You'll get the Rifleman 8D Loyalty Variant. So there's all the eligible collections. Essentially... You just need to purchase the standard pack of any of these. So if you've purchased an Inner Sphere standard pack in the last year, you have this reward. Alternatively, you can also just pick up a Resistance Hero Mech. Note that this doesn't count Hero Mechs that you buy in the game with MC. It's only the Hero Mechs purchased through the website for actual dollars and not going through that secondary step of purchasing the MC for dollars, then purchasing the the particular mech so you have to buy it from the store on the website but moving on we have the clan reward and if you exact same as the inner sphere but this time for any clan collection or clan a la carte mech you get the night gear h loyalty variant which night gear is an omni mech so you are able to use other omni pods or take the pods from this and put it on your other night gears if you wish so that's beneficial if there's any interesting pods on it. And again, the eligible collections, the different clan packs, any of them at standard or any wave 1, 2, or 2C clan hero mechs. To get the top tier inner sphere reward, you need to purchase any eligible top tier inner sphere collection or combination of eligible items and there's a lot of different combinations that can be done so i'll try my best to explain it all you'll get a warhammer 4l loyalty variant with its mech bay and you'll get two inner sphere top reward hanging items so eligible collections you can get the full packs of resistance one or resistance two which are the like you get the four different mechs in them and they're $80 each. Alternatively, you can get two collector's packs of any of these mechs. So that means that you get the collector's pack, not standard hero and reinforcement, 
collectors. However, there is other combinations for that, or any combination of any six resistance hero mechs, hero add-ons for the different packs, or reinforcement add-ons for these packs. So, for example, if you bought standard pack plus resistance, uh, standard pack plus reinforcement and hero, the reinforcement and hero would count towards those six. So if you bought three standard packs with reinforcement and hero, those would make six of this combination item, and that would count. Alternatively, if you already have, say, two standard packs and a few different heroes that you've already purchased, the Inner Sphere uh, Resistance heroes, it's probably cheaper to just upgrade a couple of your standard packs to collector's packs than it is to purchase hero add-ons and reinforcement add-ons and resistance heroes in order to get your six. It all depends on how many you've purchased and stuff like that, but that is how it's being done. The same thing for the top tier clan reward, which this will get you a Marauder 2C, uh, Mad 2C-2 loyalty variant. Same thing as the Inner Sphere version. You have to just get the top level collections. Masakari, Man of War, the Gladiator, the Origins 2C Highlander, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's important to note that the... Um, Things like the Massacre and the Man of War collection are slightly higher cost, I believe, if I have because I haven't checked in a little while, than the Origins 2C Highlander collection. So that's probably the cheapest full pack you can get is the Origins 2C. Alternatively, at least two collector's packs from the various things here, as well as any combination of six, Wave 1, Wave 2, Clan 2C hero, hero add-ons or reinforcements as well. If you have both the Inner Sphere and the Clan Top Tier reward, you'll get the Ultimate reward, which not doesn't have anything gameplay-wise. You have to get them both. You will qualify for just a bunch of cockpit items and war horns and such. So there isn't anything huge here. In the past years, they added a an additional like hero assault mech or whatever at this point, which it's it's kind of good that they've taken a, a reward out of this ultimate reward to make it a little less like you have to get absolutely everything but yeah and then some uh information down here related to uh gift codes is the reward eligibility is determined to when you redeem the gift code uh no wait through gift code redemption is determined by the original purchase date so if, they, if you purchased a gift code last year and you redeem it now, then the last year's stuff, that's for last year's stuff, and it wouldn't be valid now. I don't think that's actually very relevant. So because the last, going back in time, when this eligibility started was November of 2017, a whole year ago, practically. So you would have to have an old ass gift code sitting around in order for that to be relevant but it's not when you redeem it it's when you purchase it so just so you know but we have five new mechs here that we're possibly going to be getting so let's go take a look at their loadout details and see how you could build them first up is the mc reward with the javelin uh what is this 11f loadout now of course there's the various you know stock design but we don't really care about the stock design we just care about the hard points and its engine capacity and such it's a 30 tonner we've got a max engine rating of 255 so we're going to use that 255 because we can we've got some jump jets doesn't have ecm or mask but we have a bunch of ballistics we have three in each arm and then two energy in the right torso i see this as say six machine guns six light machine guns some form of lasers where you want that to be small pulses or medium pulses or ER mediums, whatever your flavor is. The XL255, some jump jets, call it good, run around. Kind of feels like a um, Inosphere version of the clan Arctic Cheetah Hero, the shard kind of feeling. 
That should be pretty good. I mean, it's going to be a crit-based machine gun annoying light, which means I will hate seeing it on the battlefield. But it will be effective if it uses those machine guns properly and you run around and use it in that way. The Rifleman 8D loadout, we've got the Rifleman here, max engine rating of 290. You're probably going to use a 280XL, that's what I use in all my Riflements, or sometimes when I, I want to sort of down uh, the firepower and get a little bit more durability, use a light 250 or something along those lines. It can take jump jets, which is kind of cool for a Rifleman, so you can get a little bit better mobility, just take like one or two to help you get up the hills on, say, Canyon Network, something like that. You could also use that for a little bit of pop darting because the Rifleman, its hard points are fairly in line with its cockpit, and all of the hard points for this particular mech are in the arms. We have two energy in each arm and one ballistic in each arm for four energy and two ballistic. It's maybe a tiny bit light on hard points for what this thing wants to do, but you can do stuff like a pair of AC-10s, four medium lasers. You could do a pair of light Goss and some ER mediums. You could just go energy if you wish and do like four PPCs and just go two by two. Uh, we can you probably get kind of toasty. Maybe three PPCs? I don't know. I have not personally uh, theory crafted this mech as much, but... It should be okay. It's not crazy good. I think this will depend on quirks as well for this particular mech, as things like the Legend Killer are decent, but the fact that it has some really good LB10 quirks on the Legend Killer leads that build to work well. We'll see if this thing gets a couple cool quirks related to it and then build it based on those. But overall, you can do a decent mid-range fire support design with this rifleman the warhammer 4l oh warhammer it's ecm capable ecm warhammer i am thoroughly looking forward to this we've also got stealth armor which is interesting it comes with the xl280 you might not need to change that for some of your designs however for the design i'm thinking of i would i would put in a, i think it's a light 300 because We've got, I think it's six energy, one energy in the head, two energy in the left arm, one energy in the left torso, and then two energy in the right arm. Yeah, that's six. Our ECM's in the center torso, and we have a single missile in our right torso. The design that I think was going to work well on this is six ER mediums and an MRM-40. ECM, you can get close with your MRM-40 to just derp them with that mass missile you have 60 ER mediums to just be a consistent damage threat we have a light 300 on it so we're moving pretty quickly and we're durable we can lose a sign torso we have our ecm so we're hidden i think that particular design is going to be quite good on this warhammer i'm looking forward to it it i feel like it's it's going to be a a strong mech of the line sort of thing can make it into some brawling things. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a ballistic. It would be nice if it had just a single ballistic, but we've got that single missile, and we have MRMs, which allow us to utilize single missiles way better. If this was pre-Civil War tech, I'd say that this was a laser boat, guaranteed, which you can do, but nowadays, yeah, MRM. We've got the Nightgear H loadout, and of course this is an Omnimech, so we can change around stuff. We can't change the engine, so that's fixed. Those jump jets are fixed. But it can take ECM. We have ECM in the right torso, which is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of these other particular Omnipods don't really matter because it's Omnipods. The only one that really is cool is that right torso ECM. So you can swap on whatever pods you want to take whatever combination of weaponry you want on your Niger and add ECM. Your double Gauss rifle jump pop tartar thing, it's now hidden in the skies, which will make it even harder for people to notice that they're, you're jumping up because you want to immediately be a red blip on their targeting. So it's quite good, actually. Um, Niger is a little slow right now. The mobility on this mech is 
leads leaves you wanting a little bit faster, but it can still put out a lot of damage, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. And then the last one here is the Marauder 2C Man 2C-2 loadouts, which is Clan Battle Mech. So we can change our engine, but we can go up to a max engine of 400. It's probably going to be an XL 325 or 350 or something along those lines. And we can take jump jets, which is kind of cool. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, at 85 tons, we are still in the class two jump jets, which are one ton each. So these are only four tons to get the full jump jets and not eight tons if it was to get four jump jets with assault max like the uh, Highlander 2C and things like that. It makes it so much more investment you need to get jump jets on those assault level max, those heavy assaults. This is just on the cusp of still having those single ton jump jets, which is quite nice. This mech is entirely energy based with three energy in the left arm, two in the center torso and two in the right arm. So it's going to be some sort of heavy laser vomit, you know, pair of heavy larges, bunch of ear mediums, or even like a pair of uh, large pulse lasers and a bunch of medium pulse lasers with some jump jets and a big engine. It's going to be a mobile laser vomit with jump jets. So you're going to be able to get a Marauder 2C into places that people won't expect a Marauder 2C to be there that quick and surprise them with some wubs. That's probably how I'm going to play mine. And that is the end of the designs. But now the last thing, and I do this every year, is a calculation on the Spreadsheet Warrior. They have very, very specific criteria for the packages that they're putting out there, the, the rewards for the top tier. I'll just pop back to it here. So eligible collections, you get the Wave 1 Masakari or the Wave 2 Mana War or this or you get any two collector's packs of these, or any six of these, sort of thing. There's all these ors in there. But it annoys me. Full disclosure here, on my main account, I'm getting all the rewards. So really, it doesn't matter to me in the long run, because I'm getting everything. However, the way that it's set up is so that if you don't purchase the right thing, you can have issues where you don't get that top level reward, even though you've really invested into the game enough to qualify in my mind. So, just for example, because it is very specific, you need to get the collector's pack, or you need to get six of this. And those are mutually exclusive and stuff like that. What I've done here is I've basically gone through and tabulated up everything that could be purchased without triggering top tier rewards. So the minimum you can spend to get these rewards is very simple. You just get a couple collector's pack of your choice. It's 80 bucks. That's a small packages option if you want. Or you can get a single large package. You get the top tier resistance one or two pack, or you get the Highlander 2C pack. $80. So we have a precedence that the easiest and cheapest way to get these top tier packages, well, to get this top tier reward, is to spend around $80. There are a few other ways where you could spend a bit more if you just bought heroes and things like that, but it's around $80 to get the top tier reward. However, if you are very careful, and this is by no means realistic, but it's theoretically possible, you could get the one-off for the resistance packs. Resistance to Knight, Black Knight pack is not the full tier pack, so it wouldn't count. And the Resistance Fury is the Set one step down of the resistance pack, so that wouldn't count. You just add all those up with the standard packs from everything, the five most expensive heroes that would count, and then you total it all up. So theoretically, you could spend $640 on Inner Sphere related packs and not 
qualify for top tier rewards. Now you would only be like another 15 or $20 or whatever away from getting the top tier rewards because you would just need to pick up one additional hero and that would be the cheapest way to do it. But you could spend 640 on eligible items, and I'm doing air quotes with my fingers, but I can't see me because it's a video, and still not get it. Same thing with the clans. We add all that up. You could spend around $925. This is higher because their big packs are more expensive than... Uh, actually, the, this should be up here. That's a big pack, the uh, 2C Orion. They have more big packs, and their, their big packs are more expensive. So that is why they're so much higher, but they're $925 of clan products without getting the clan reward, the top tier one. And total that all up, it is $1,565. Now, this doesn't include any, you know, things you buy from like mastery bundles or anything you buy with MCs. You could get a whole bunch of heroes and mechs and stuff with MC and those don't count. And all that kind of stuff. Which, I don't know, it just annoys me. It's, it's not that big of a deal. The majority of players are just going to need, if they don't qualify for something, they're just going to need to top up with like $20 or $30 of product, and then they can get the top tier reward if they want. And it's entirely optional as well. But I just imagine a situation where you have a, a dedicated player who is playing the game, and every single month, a new mech pack comes out, and they purchase the standard pack because they want to support the game, and they basically treat it like a game subscription. You get the standard pack, you get premium time, so you can level your mechs faster, and you get a few of the new mechs, so that way you can partake in the events whenever a mech comes out, and they just treat it like a subscription. And every month, without fail, they get the new standard pack. They're not interested in the heroes. They're not interested in the collector's pack. It's not worth it for them because they're getting their month of premium time from the standard packs. That player could spend hundreds of dollars on the game a year and then not get the top tier reward. It doesn't feel right to me. I wish that they would just... Because I've done this three years now, done these calculations... I think I started in 2016, did it in 2017, and I'm doing it here in 2018. I really wish that what they would do is they would just say, you have to spend X dollars in clan product, or you have to spend X dollars in Intersphere product to get the various rewards. Because obviously they know what packs we have. They know when we got them. So they should be able to pull that list of packs, put a point value to it, which is basically the dollar value, and then say, you have spent $80. Because that's the precedent they've, they've established over here. And therefore, you get the reward. You don't have to go through the whole mind games of Okay, I bought a standard pack then, and I upgraded to collectors then. When I bought two heroes, oh, but it's actually cheaper to do it this way. Oh, wait, I could get this hero. Oh, but did I get that on sale? Does that count? Like, they have to do all these calculations in their head to figure out whether or not they qualify to be a valued customer. When really, it should just be a log on, or look at this bar graph or something that says, you need to spend 15 more dollars on clan product of these eligible things and you'll get the reward. It would be so much easier for the user. It would be so much fairer to the user because then they can just purchase what they want instead of having to purchase specific things because, oh, you didn't get the reward because you didn't purchase the right product. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll continue to say this every year until something happens to it because this is the uh, the same thing that has occurred last year. Although this number has actually gone down from last year because they added in the any six combination of hero add-ons and reinforcement packs. 
if that wasn't in there, all of these 20s would be like 50s, and these numbers dramatically increase. But every year, I add more packs to this to cover the last year of additional mechs that get released. And uh, there will be another mech in here. I don't know if it'll be Intersphere or Clan, because there will be another mech put up for pre-order before these go live. And that one will count too, because they've always done that. So it'll, it'll be even a little tiny bit higher, another $20 here somewhere. But still, I don't know. It's not really that much of an issue, but it's just an annoyance of mine. But that's going to be it. We have the new rewards when they eventually come out. I'll do build videos on all of them. And uh, thanks for watching. Good hunting.